It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time-poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. Welcome to another week, another edition of the Happy Families Podcast. Today, joining me, Detective Superintendent Jane Crossling from the Australian Senate Account of Child Exploitation, otherwise known as ACE. Uh, Jane has been on the podcast a couple of times now, talking about all things online, all the challenges that we face when it comes to keeping our children safe and working with the police to counter child exploitation. You can imagine that Jane has a lot of wisdom and unfortunately a whole lot of experience that we don't really want to experience ourselves to lean on. Jane, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Justin. I want to have a conversation with you today about something that there's been a lot of noise about in the media over the last couple of weeks. And I I have to be honest, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I'd love for you to either put me straight or provide me with the reassurance so long as a few things are taken care of. The topic is parents taking photos of their kids in their school uniform and posting them online. So obviously in the last couple of weeks, the entire nation has returned from summer holidays, Christmas holidays, everyone's kids have gone back to school and I I can't count on all my fingers and all my toes, the number of my Facebook friends, my Instagram friends who have been sharing photos of their kids online saying first day of school or look at this happy bunch. And and for me, I'm looking at it going, I don't know why there's all these new news articles about the, the potential threats. Obviously, I'm not working in the area that you're working in, but is it really that risky to post a pic of your kids outside their school or in their school uniform online to celebrate the fact that they've done something awesome or they're going back to school or they're about to win the cross country or they've won the swimming carnival or whatever it is. What's what's the hype around this and is it overstated or is it legitimate? Okay, it's legitimate and we welcome the opportunity to talk about some of the reasons why we do say it is legitimate. Um, so we're not for a moment saying don't post. It's just that you need to take a moment to work out are you posting safely. So I think it would be really a poor message from law enforcement to come out to say, no, 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 don't take photos of your kids, don't share those moments with with people in your life. But there are ways to do it that are much more safe than what we frequently see. So we can talk about it from a law enforcement perspective to say in two key areas of what we see that's quite concerning. One is that there's too, there's too much information in the imagery that allows a young person or indeed their family to be groomed for sexual purposes. So that's one really concerning aspect. The other thing is that we know when we seize devices from offenders, which we do, you know, every week in Australia, we see these otherwise innocent images ending up in the collection of online child sexual offenders. So there's kind of two key things going on there. One is that the information that's contained within those images is used as leverage to uh, pretend that they actually know the child in more detail and know more details about them than is otherwise safe. And then the other aspect is the fact that you don't know where these images are ending up depending on how they've been shared. So we're not saying don't post, just think about how you're posting. I'd like to talk about the how to post safely discussion in in just a sec. I'm hearing what you're saying. I talk to a lot of parents day in and day out. I talk to school teachers day in and day out. Uh, I've, I've got my own six kids, obviously. And while I read about it in the news, hear about it, it's one of those things that happens to other people. It's so far removed from the interactions that I have with everyday mums and dads that I'm interacting with on a day-to-day basis, this sort of stuff so rarely, so infrequently comes across my path. I feel uncomfortable saying it to you because obviously your experience tells you this is a big deal, but I kind of, as as I put myself into the mindset of everyday mums and dads who are listening to this conversation, I still kind of resist. It feels like it's so extra. It's like we're asking so much, are there really that many depraved, warped, crazy. I I mean, I know even I'm asking the question what you're going to say. Yes, there are. But it seems so improbable to me that there are that many people who are out there who are mining online social media platforms for images of my kids or your kids or whoever's listening to the podcast right now for their kids. Do do you know what I mean? It it just seems so incredible. It it seems so far-fetched that this is such a big deal. How much does this really happen? Well, it's just one of the many tools that an online groomer or an offender might use. So 
when we've spoken in the past, we talk about sexual extortion. Right. This is one of the tactics that, that sexual extorters would use to say, oh, you know, you know me, I'm a friend of a friend, I also go to school X. So they've got that key piece of information that they can actually utilise to get um, uh, through the uh, otherwise barrier that they would be putting up to say that, yeah, hang on a minute, actually I don't know you, but they've given a key piece of information. Oh, hang on a minute, they know what school I go to. Ah, right, and in a big school to make out that you're a friend of a friend, that's that's legitimate potentially for a young person and their and their thought processes. That's a form of social engineering. So unfortunately, yes, we do see it um, in a variety of different grooming and and extortion type circumstances. Additionally, we absolutely see a lot of kids in school uniforms in the collections. Uh, and as you might appreciate, over the years when we've been seizing um, devices, the amount of data and the amount of images that that actually equates to just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and we don't want to necessarily see all of these, uh, what we might call innocent images ending up in these collections because it's hard to know why they're in there. What has the offender done with those images? How have they interacted with them? And why would they even want them to be in there? And we've got no idea how they ended up there necessarily. And it, it might have been due to just poor security on behalf of the young person themselves or maybe the adult. I really appreciate you being patient with me in, in, in me asking that question. But I, I can't help but think that it's one of those things that people must be rolling their eyes about. At least a portion of the population would be rolling their eyes about and saying, oh, for goodness sakes, we have to be scared of everything. Do we, can I not just post a picture of my kids? So let's move to the practical realities then. If there are, and, and I, of course I take you at your word on this, I, I absolutely believe you. If there are bad actors out there who have wicked and evil intentions in terms of the way that they might interact either with our children or just imagery of our children online. But we still want to share that photo with the grandparents or with the aunties and uncles or with our friend circle on social Absolutely. media platforms. I, I mean, it, it feels like we should have that right. We should be able to do that and do so in a way that doesn't put our children or our families at risk. What kind of advice does the Australian Senate to counter child exploitation, ACE, and the Australian Federal Police, what kind of advice do you give to parents so that they can do so safely? It's really not all that complex what our message here is. It's about um, urging parents who want to share those images, and we understand parents will want to do that, and that's one of the key benefits in these sorts of social media platforms is to share just make sure they have appropriate privacy settings in place. That, that's all we're suggesting. So, um, you know, you should only share those images with people that you know and trust. We would ideally suggest that parents, if they want to share anything on their own social media platforms, that they actually know everybody that they're friends with. Are they artificially creating a vulnerability because they have friends that they don't actually know in the real world? So this is an opportunity for parents to do a little bit of a privacy checkup and there are ways to do that depending on what platform you're on that are pretty easy. Um, we, we would just say um, have a think about who might actually need access to these children and, yes, keep all of the family in there. That, that's how Facebook currently is, is really the, the space for that type of sharing. This is where the teenagers have left that particular platform we know in droves because it's become that kind of more family oriented and um, we have a lot of the grandparents that have that have moved into that space, which is a positive because I think, you know, that's one of the real um, pro-technology aspects that we can, we can promote to say that for some older Australians, it is actually a way to keep connected, mm. particularly if there's any, uh, you know, tyranny of distance as we frequently experience in this country. But it's also so, a protective factor, right? Like if you know that your parents and your grandparents your aunties and your uncles and all of your extended family are on that platform, then you're much less likely to post things that could be incriminating. You, you, you're going to be on your best behaviour. Yes, for the young people. Mm. Um, that's not to say that they're on other um, platforms of course. that parents may or may not know about and that they might be doing slightly riskier things. But with, with the focus on parents, we feel that there's an opportunity for parents to act as um, good role models. Yeah. So if parents are giving some thought to the type of material and the online presence that they're responsible for curating, then they're good role models for their children as well. 
if young people grow up in that environment where parents are sharing absolutely everything, then it could be that young people see that as um, quite normalised behaviour and that there is a risk where a young person won't necessarily do the same sense checking and, um, you know, show the same level of care when it comes to posting. So I think it's part of a broader conversation in a family unit uh, and it's also there's some ethical considerations here as well. Um, do the kids themselves want to have their images shared? Uh, that's one question. And if kids knew that it was only in a limited and controlled environment, then maybe they're comfortable with that. But they themselves have a role in this and maybe some voice. And the other question that we sometimes ask of parents is, um, what, what do you think the ethics are of sharing images on your profile of other children? Do you seek the permission of other parents to do that? Um, you know, are parents talking amongst each other about the appropriateness of sharing these sorts of images? So I think these are considerations and questions that I'm not sure people are having these sorts of conversations generally. While you were sharing those ideas, I just jumped into my Facebook profile and attempted to, uh, j just as a rehearsal to, to see how easy this is, just went to share a picture of um, for, from one of my photo albums and when you when you jump into Facebook uh, all you have to do is you, you, there's a button underneath your name when you're creating a post and it says who do you want to share it with so I've clicked on that and I can share it publicly with anyone on or off Facebook I can share it with my friends or there's another button close friends or friends except or mm -hmm. specific friends or only me and then there's custom audiences that you can create so i've got a handful of mm -hmm. custom audiences in my personal profile on facebook where if i'm sharing stuff that is perhaps a little bit more personal it only goes to that really close group of people where if it's something more i don't know ostentatious then i can share it a lot more publicly it's very very easy to do it like you said but mm -hmm. i'm gonna guess that most of the time many people are just popping it up there and pressing the share button and out it goes yeah, we, we think that might be happening. And, and even if people are posting to friends only, they may have accepted friendship requests a long time ago and they're not actually really real-world friends. So having a little think about what does your friendship group actually look like and um, do you actually genuinely know everybody that you are friends with and do you know that that's where all of these images are going of your child with or without their consent? Detective Superintendent Jane Crossling from ACE, the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation. Um, is, is there anything else that you think parents really need to know about other than what we've talked about? That is, yes, it's okay to share, but do it responsibly. Make sure you know who you're sharing it with and how. Check those settings and, and check on permission. Like, make sure that the people that you're sharing the images of are cool with you sharing that. Is there anything else that would be really important for parents to take home from this conversation? This is just part of a broader conversation that parents need to have with children um, from the moment that a child is going to start engaging with technology. So we absolutely advocate for very, very early conversations. Given children, you know, uh, at, at very, very young ages start interacting with that technology, that is the time to start having conversations about um, what can that device do, who can they connect with when they're on a device, um, what are the expectations around its usage? Um, we recommend that families consider um, the contracts that we've mentioned before where um, you can sit down as a family unit and actually work out how technology is, is appropriately used in that household from the moment a young person is actually getting access to a device. Uh, and then um, having those conversations around um, what does a trusted um, family member or adult look like in the event that they do need to talk to somebody. These are all parts of the holistic approach we would want to take to um, online safety, um, ensuring that um, there are open doors and ongoing communication so that if something were to go wrong, they would know to bring that problem to, to the parent. Having a parent actually sit down and look at their own settings, but also the settings of any other technology that the young person is using as well. Um, just having that engagement, I think, is, is really critical. And that means also bringing the child in on the conversation about what is getting shared. Um, mm. And, you know, I, as a parent, I've, I've realised now I've, I've posted some 
what I think are funny images of my of my daughter, and um, she's made reference years later to sort of say, you know, um, you, you didn't ever check with me, Mum, and yeah. I realised. No, no, I actually didn't. And yes, it was only shared to friends, but I realise now that I probably should have been getting um, just a little bit more, you know, uh, consent from her and having that level of engagement. Um, we talked about safety messages, but we didn't talk about those sorts of things as well. So I think, um, you know, the obvious thing that we've been talking about is back to school. But this is this goes beyond that, uh, and the timing of some of our messaging has been back to school, but it doesn't just stop there. So the obvious message is, you know, don't don't show school logos, don't stand in front of your house with your street name or your house number, don't stand in front of the school um, sign. Um, it just gives way too much information that it makes it very very easy for a young person to be groomed. But then. The conversation can't just stop there. It has to it has to be in every facet of their life. When they're playing sport, when they're in after school activities and things like that, every every facet of their life, it just needs to be an ongoing component in in a much more holistic way. Really grateful for this conversation, um, Detective Superintendent Jane Crossling from the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation or ACE. All the resources for parents who want to know more are at the ACE website. That's a triple c e dot gov dot au. Yes. And we'll link to that in the show notes. Jane, thank you for your pragmatic approach to this because I, I, I really thought for a moment that you were going to say, stop sharing photos of your kids. I love that you've said do it, but do it the right way. Do it safely and make sure that you're protecting the interests of your child and, and keep on having those conversations. I look forward to having you back on the podcast again. Look forward to that really soon. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rowland from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And for more information about keeping your kids safe, check out the ACE website or for how to make your family happier, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.